Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Roseboro. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. So have you ever heard somebody say that Ephesians 2.10 says, You are God's masterpiece. It doesn't really say that. <laughs> um, yeah, we have an example of that today. And this is a weird one. Okay, yeah, I got I to gotta let you know before we get into it. From time to time, there are things that I find as I'm preparing for episodes of Fighting for the Faith, there are some things that just leave me scratching my head going, what did I just watch? This caught my eye because the thumbnail sketch had a f picture of a woman that I'm not really that familiar with. Her name is Charity Kalstrup, and it shows the, this woman holding a roll of toilet paper, and it apparently... And I kid you not, she's comparing you and I to toilet paper. <laughs> it's like, what? I mean, so I have kind of a dark interpretation of what it is that we're going to see. So I, I don't know how else to prepare you for what it is that we're about to see. But I would note that this one's a weird one. And along the way, we will deal with that idea that somehow Ephesians 2.10 says you are God's masterpiece. No, it, it really doesn't say that. So uh, let's whirl up the desktop and let's get into it, shall we? All right. Uh, yeah, the Sydney Opera House. And let's do this. I will pull up my web browser. And here's Charity Calstrip. She's holding a <clears throat> roll of toilet paper. <laughs> and um, let's let her explain what this is all about. Here we go. You remind me of this toilet paper. Fine. I'm in pain already. <laughs> um, wow. You remind, you remind me of toilet paper. Good grief. That's terrible. Um, what an awful comparison. And how is this a Christian teaching again? Let's continue. Find out why on today's Young Life podcast brought to you by Dean Shropshire Ministries. I'm Charity Kalstrup, and I'm so excited to hang with you. All right. She's going to hang with us, and you remind her of toilet paper. Okay. Okay, so here's the deal. So maybe about a month ago, I sat down, I know it's kind of TMI, to use the restroom, and um, I have an amazing team, uh, like a housekeeper service that cleans my house. Charity, you are aware what toilet paper is used for, and you're saying <laughs> the people in your audience remind you of toilet paper? This seems like some kind of satanic mockery yeah, that I'm listening to. And so I sat down to use the restroom and I was so shocked to find this most incredible toilet paper. I don't know if you guys have seen this. This Incredible toilet paper. What? <laughs> incredible toilet paper. This is Charmin brand, but when you tear it, it doesn't tear straight. It tears like curved. And I was like, oh my gosh, 2024 is like my favorite year ever. And I don't know if this was out in 23 and I just didn't have it, but I just like literally was like in awe of this toilet paper and the fact that it was curved. Like who came up with that? That Who cares? It's toilet paper. You wipe your bum with it and it ends up in the toilet and you flush it. <laughs> Who cares if it tears straight or if it's curvy? That is so unique. That is so creative. And honestly, toilet paper is toilet paper. But I like the soft toilet paper. And like, I like things that are unique because I'm unique. You're unique. You. <laughs> oh, I'm in pain. <laughs> You know that text in 2 Timothy that talks about the days will come when people will not endure sound doctrine, but uh, having itching ears, they will accumulate, accumulate for themselves teachers who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. She wants to scratch the itching ears of the people in her audience, but I don't know if she's succeeding here. If I were a member of her audience, I would really be offended that she compared me to toilet paper. What on earth is this? <laughs> 
Let, let, let me back this up just a little bit. Here, here we go. That is so creative. And honestly, toilet paper is toilet paper. But I like the soft toilet paper. And like, I like things that are unique because I'm unique. You're unique. You were made in God's image. He created you so unique. And so when I saw this toilet paper, honestly, I... I would know we humanity was originally created in the image of God, but I got to show you something here. Uh, when so when people talk in general like this, oh, you were you are unique, you were made in the image of God, they are ignoring man's fall into sin, and that's part of how people scratch itching ears. So in Genesis chapter one, it legitimately says this that. Um, you know, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created a male and female. He created them. But in Genesis chapter 3, humanity rebelled against God, broke the commandment regarding not eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and as a result of it, we fell into sin. In the subsequent chapters, then, we read about what happened to humanity. So in like in Genesis chapter 4, it says this, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of Yahweh. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a worker of the ground. You kind of get the idea. But it goes on then to explain what happens with Adam's descendants, okay? In Genesis chapter five, uh, it says, this is the book of the generations of Ad Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them and he blessed them and named them man, uh, Adam, when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. So note, um, because of the fall, uh, we don't reflect the image of God like, you, like Adam did before the fall. In fact, Genesis chapter 5, verse 3 clearly states that he fathered a son in his own likeness, and Adam was a sinner. So you got a problem. Those who scratch itching ears, oh, you are unique, you are special, you are created in the image of God. We're just going to ignore mankind's fall into sin and how the scriptures say that after uh, after Adam and Eve fell, that their, the children that they had were made in their image, in their likeness, rather than in the image of God. That's what the text says. So charity is off here. She shouldn't be teaching at all, clearly. She's not qualified. But we continue. I was so encouraged to encourage people. And you may be watching this podcast and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. You're not what many would consider to be a Christian or a born again believer. And I'm going to give you the opportunity. So you think you're talking to non-believers, but you're telling them they're made in the image of God without explaining sin? To need to pray with me at the end of this broadcast to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Because when you connect with him, you can connect with the true reason why you exist and why you're alive. You know, there's so much competition. There's so much insecurity. There's so much jealousy that literally has infused itself into our society. It's like nobody feels good about them. From the youngest toddler to the oldest senior citizen, everybody is trying to change themselves. Everybody's trying to be something different. And I want you to be encouraged and I want you to be reminded. Maybe get yourself, get yourself, yourself, get yourself some toilet paper like this. Um, even just Get some toilet paper so you can remind yourself of how special and unique you are. Oh, this is so cringe. This is a reminder of how unique and valuable you are because y'all, that is unique. Like how many years, how many hundreds of years have we had toilet paper that tore straight? Who came up with the design to perforate? <laughs> this so bad. And make it curvy. That is is the best. It's the best. And guess what? It's, you are the best. I want to show you. Oh, really? You, you just made it clear you're talking to non-believers and you're telling non-believers they're the best. What? Some verses in God's word. All right, here we go. Here comes the Bible verse twisting uh, page. First Peter 2, 9. It says you are a chosen person by God. You okay. First Peter 2, 9. What are the three rules for sound biblical exegesis? Context, 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 right? So 1 Peter 3, 9. 1 Peter 3, verse 9, right? Who is this 
Uh, is, let's see. Is it two? Hang on a second. Let, 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 listen First again. First Peter two nine. It's a two nine. There we go. First Peter two verse nine. All right. Who's this written to? Christians or non Christians? Is First Peter written to Christians or to non Christians? Answer: It's written to Christians. Right. First Peter one says, um, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God. So you're going to note, we Christians are, des are described here as elect exiles, right? According to the foreknowledge of God in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. First Peter is clearly written to Christians, okay? So when we get to First Peter 2.9, uh, you are a chosen race. Who is that referring to? Christians, not the world, not unbelievers, Christians. You are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, which we all need, by the way, but now you have received mercy. So this can't be shown to, you know, to, as an example of, oh, just how unique every human being is. This, is. this is language specifically that can only be attributed to Christians, not unbelievers. But we continue. It says you are a chosen person by God. You are priests of the king. You are holy. You are pure. You are God's very own. The Bible says, I believe in Ephesians 2.10, that you are God's masterpiece. You There it is. Ephesians 2.10. You are God's masterpiece. This is an example of scratching, itching ears. Done really poorly, by the way, comparing you to toilet paper. So if we go to Ephesians chapter 2, here's the text in question, and we'll put it back in context. We are his workmanship. We, who's the we there? And we are his workmanship. And so here, here's the word that gets translated in the bad translations as masterpiece. The word is poema. And no, this is, has nothing to do with you being a poem or a masterpiece. A poema is that which is made. That, that is something that is a work. It is a creation, okay? We are God's workmanship. We are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works. 1 Peter 2.10 does not say that you are God's masterpiece, and it does not talk about humanity in that way at all in general. In fact, when you apply the context of Ephesians chapter 2, you'll note that Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, works together as a unit. And what the, the beginning thought here in, the, in verse 1, is mirrored in its opposite here in verse 10. This actually follows uh, a Hebrew outlining uh, technique known as a chiasm. So listen to how this passage works. Paul, writing to Christians in, the, in Ephesus, says this, You were dead, past tense, you were dead in trespasses and sins, which is the state of humanity before they become Christians, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So you'll note Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 describes humanity not as God's masterpiece. It describes humanity as dead in trespasses and sins and by nature children of wrath. Under the dominion of darkness, under the power of the prince of the air and the sons of disobedience and people following the passions and living by the passions of their sinful flesh. It is not describing us as God's masterpiece. This is a description of humanity after the fall. And that's, we were all of us conceived this way, born, conceived and born dead in trespasses and sins and by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. However, the text goes on, but God. And I would note here in the Greek, ha theos, but God, ha de theos, God is in the nominative. That means God is the one who's running the verbs that follow next. He's the subject of the verbs, okay? 
But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even while we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. And this is a tough word to pronounce. Soon aids o poiesen, right? Soon aids poieo is the word. It's, it's, it, and it takes five English words to translate the one Greek verb. God made us alive together with Christ. This is what God has done for us. By grace you have been saved, and here's the next verb, and raised us up with him, sunegero, and that means, so, so God raised us up with Christ, and God seated us with Christ, sukathizo uh, here in Greek, God seated us with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So God, what did he do? Made us alive together with Christ. He raised us with Christ. God seated us with Christ, okay? So that in the coming ages, he, God, might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. It is not the result of work so that no one may boast. And here we go. For we... Christians, that's what this is referring to, not humanity in general. We are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus as Christians for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So when you hear Charity Calstrip here, sit here and say, well, there it says in Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's masterpiece, and she's clearly making it clear she's also talking to unbelievers, Ephesians 2.10 doesn't apply to unbelievers. Ephesians 2.10 only applies to Christians who have been made alive by, by God, made alive together with Christ, raised with Christ, seated with Christ. God did all of that for us. So she's, this is just terrible. <laughs> you get the idea. It's just so terrible because she's she's scratching, itching ears, telling people what they want to hear and tell them how unique they are. You're so unique. You're like toilet paper. Charity Calstrip says. And then she goes on to twist the scriptures and not make the proper distinctions. This shows this woman's not qualified to teach anybody. She needs to go back for remedial to remedial Sunday school to relearn, if she ever learned, the actual basics of the Christian faith. But again, I point out that comparing us all to toilet paper, what a horrible, horrible metaphor and comparison that is. If I were somebody in her audience, I would be offended that she would compare me to toilet paper. This is uh, scratching, itching ears gone wrong. I think you get the point. So hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video is down below in the description. And a quick shout out for those of you who support Fighting for the Faith financially. Thank you. You make it possible for us to keep doing what we are doing. And if you would like to support us financially and join our crew, there's a link down below that will take you to our website where you can join our crew. And if you do, again, thank you for supporting us and making it possible for us to do what we do. We couldn't be doing it without it. So next, until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. So nice to see that you've made it to the end. Before you inevitably click on another video to continue binging our glorious content, you should know about some of our other offerings. First off, some of you may know that our pirate captain is also the pastor of Kongsvinger Lutheran Church out in Oslo, Minnesota. The editor, that I totally don't have locked in my basement, produces audio and video versions of Kongsvinger sermons and Sunday schools weekly. So go check out kongsvingerchurch.org to see all of our offerings. Now, to address some of the frequently asked questions we get in the comments. <clears throat> what? The Bible and video editing software we use are named and linked in the description down below. Two! If you wish to donate to us directly so that we can keep the lights on, go check out www.piratechristian.com and hit the Crew tab. We don't promise miraculous healings or a double increase in your finances, but what we do promise is more quality discernment from our studio into your ear holes. And three. How do you tie up with boxing gloves? Okay, who's the wiseacre who put this in here?